Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch. Welcome back to our ongoing Hacks and Hacks Fixel tutorial series. Today we are going to cover sprite animation. It's a fairly straightforward topic, so it shouldn't actually take us a whole lot of time. At least, I hope it doesn't. Uh, well, basically what it works like is, if you ever um, drawn a little sequence of animations across the bottom corner of uh, uh, a notebook and then you flip through the pages and it causes the appearance of animation. Well, it, it literally is animation, I suppose. It's not just the appearance. But you just kind of change each frame slightly and then you just flip through them over time and it does give you the appearance of animation. Well, we're going to do the exact same thing but with sprites. What you do here is have a sequence of sprites that represent all of your frames of animation. In this particular case, I have a walk cycle that I've done. You see here, I've added this image. This is one single image with um, 16 sub-images in it. And this represents our character walking. And what we're going to do is use this to give um, to make animation, make 2D animation. So without further ado, let's jump into the code. You can see here in the code, um, I've got the basic setups going. Our sprite sheet is actually still just a normal sprite. Um, and I've added it to the world. I also created a text here that we're going to use for some uh, feedback. I should probably add that in as well. Uh, this is just for displaying some stuff on screen. So text equals new. FLX text. We covered this in an earlier um, tutorial, so I'm not going to go into much detail on how to use text objects. But we'll add that guy in there. We're going to use that for a little bit of diagnostics later on. All right, so we've got our sprite sheet. It's just a normal sprite. We load it from our graphic, and we add it to our, our scene. And that's about it. Now let's go ahead and run this code. And you will see it doesn't work exactly like we want yet. Um, when it works. All right, so what you see here is this is the first frame of animation, but you're also seeing, uh, which would be, I suppose, the fifth frame of animation is showing up as well. And if our resolution was a little bit wider, you'd see the next frame was right over here. Obviously, this isn't what we want to do. What we want to do is tell Hacksflixel to use just a subsection as your actual frame. In order to do that, we need to change this load graphic call slightly. And what we are going to do is change it so that it goes um, Yes, true, it's animated. And now we tell what, what each size, each frame of animation is. Remember I told you they were 512 by 384 pixel sub rectangles? Well, we just tell that to um, uh, Hackflixel and it is now gonna know that this is an animation sequence. So if I went ahead and run this, yeah, I'll do that now. This will now only show the first frame. So you see, we're not showing that other sub rectangle down below. It's, it's capping it to the size we want it. So now what we want to do is actually define an animation. Uh, since we're facing right, let's start with it. So we do sprite sheet dot animation dot add. And we're going to call it walk right. So, and now what you do is you pass in an index. So what you're passing in is an array of ints that represent the index within the image. So we look here, this is 0, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, etc. And what we want to tell it is what frames of animation from this source image to use as part of this guy. And in this particular case, it's pretty simple, straightforward, because we actually want to use all of them. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right, so that should be an array of all of the indices. And then finally, uh, true. And I think that's just to say that it is unique. Um, I have an extra bracket in here for no apparent reason. Okay, let's go to the hover over and find out what that true was about. Uh, oh, I didn't give the frame rate. Okay, default frame rate is going to be 5. This is the rate of playback speed. So when you say 5, you're saying uh, in, as this animation advances, make it so that 5 frames in a second are shown. So if you want to speed up the animation, you'd obviously make that much faster, but we'll go with five for now. And then the true was, oops, I just hit my trackpad. The true is to say loop it. So basically when we get to the end of the animation, automatically start it over again. And so now we have an animation defined. Uh, don't really need to change anything else, but what we do need to do is tell it to actually play the animation. So sprite sheet.animation.play, and you just play it by name. So we called it walk right. So, yeah, let's go ahead and run this guy. Ta-da! So, where is our walk animation at 5 frames per second? And now let's show you some of the cool stuff we can do. So now what we're going to do is take the exact same thing and walk left. 
It's going to use the same sequence of frames, but what we do is we come in here and we add another parameter. So if I come in here, you can see I have the option for flipping on the x-axis and flipping on the y-axis. So we're going to go ahead and flip on the x-axis. So now we can uh, we have an animation sequence for walking left. And now let's just go ahead and make it so that we can change that up. We'll change it on this if we press the space bar. So if and we'll just key it off the uh, so flxg.keys. Just released dot space. So if we press the space bar, what did I just do? All right, that's getting annoying. Hit my trackpad again and deleted all my code. Lovely. All right, so if we press the space bar, we are going to check if sprite sheet dot animation dot name equals walk right. So basically check to see if the currently playing animation's name is walk right. And if it is, we simply want to flip it. Sprite sheet dot animation dot play walk left. And otherwise, Uh, ah, so now we go ahead and play our code. Dun, dun, dun. And we're walking the one way. We can go ahead and flip it and walk the other way, like so. Pretty cool stuff. Pretty simple so far. Now let's change it up and show you a couple other things that we can do. Uh, let's change up the frame rate this time. So we're going to do this again down here in the update. By the way, once again, all of the code is available on GameFromScratch.com. I will link that again down below. Uh, so we're going to do this on the up and down keys. We press the up arrow. Ah, oh, okay, I got to turn that off. There, no more touchpad. Sprite sheet. Dot animation dot cur animation dot frame rate plus plus. So this is that five we were talking about earlier. Um, so we're just going to change the frame rate each time we press the up or down arrow. I'm going to go ahead and run that. And I think you're going to I think you'll be able to guess what happens here. So we want it to speed up, press the up arrow, we start moving faster, and faster, and faster, and faster, and faster, and comedically fast. We're probably going to cap out about 60 frames per second, which is our default frame rate. And let's keep hitting back down. And we're going to slow down, slower, 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 like so. And done. Now let's go ahead and use that text we were talking about earlier so we can actually see what the current frame rate is as we're going. So text.text .text equals So that's just going to print out what the current frame animation is. I should have probably done that before I did the up and down. Now, finally, let's show how to actually stop the animation. So if flxg.keys.justreleased.escape. So I hit the escape key. And then we'll go sprite sheet.animation.curanim.cur frame equals zero. Now this is optional, but basically what I'm doing is I'm resetting it back to the initial pose of the animation when we stop it, which is useful if you're going to start the animation back up again, and you're going to start it from the beginning. That way it doesn't twitch between the two. Um, and then we're just going to go ahead and go sprite sheet dot animation dot finish. All right. So yeah, see it's setting its frame to the last one.
And that's not necessarily what I want. I want to set it to the first one, which is why I went ahead and did this. That's completely optional to you. Uh, it's just if you're going to play it again, generally you start playing it from the first animation frame instead of the last animation frame. Uh, so that's why I've, I've done that one step there. Uh, so now we'll go ahead and play that. And ta-da. So you can see up top corner, current speed is 5. Current speed is now... 15, hit the space bar, we flip the other direction. I'll drag the speed up again, like so. And I hit escape, and the animation stops. We go back to frame zero. So pretty much all you need to know to handle animation is here. Now what you kind of run into though, of course, is when one animation ends, you often want to switch to another animation, or you might want to have um, some code that responds to a certain frame of animation. And the cool thing is we do have a series of callbacks available to us. First off, we have um, a callback every frame. Now, what's going to be a little confusing here is um, this frame versus index, uh, because in my particular case, they're actually the same thing. So uh, what they're saying is the frame is, uh, sorry, the, the index is the index into your image here. So this is the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, or actually be the zeroth, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, etc. Now, index. Um, could be something different. What that is, is the index within the, the uh, array of ints you defined here. Because this could actually be a sequence where my animation frames were actually uh, the zero with one, the fifth, the ninth, and the fourth. But in that case, you're still, your index of that array would only be zero, one, two, and three. So that's why you've got the two separate values there. Um, so now we're gonna go ahead and just print those out. Uh, animation colon. So this is the name of the animation that's playing. So, go ahead and run this guy. And now you see right here, as we're advancing through, it's updating and drawing and telling us what the current frame of animation is. So as this loops back to zero, you'll see it goes back to zero. And again, in my particular case, the frame and the index are exactly the same. That would be very common for that to occur. But it is possible that you don't use all of the actual uh, animation frames in the source image. You might only use individual ones. So that's why those two separate values do exist. Now, the final thing that we're going to look at is callback when an animation is completed. And this is very, very commonly used, especially if you're sequencing animations. So when an animation ends, um, so say you, you could have it for a couple of purposes. You could have a dying animation, and at the end of the dying animation, you want to go ahead and kill off your sprite. That's an option there. Or at the end of a jump animation, you might want to go into the idle or land animation in, or your you know walk animation or however you want to sequence it. So it's very common to want to do some kind of a callback when an animation completes. So sprite sheet animation finish callback. So this is a method that's going to get called when your code completes, and it's passed in the name of the animation that finished. Uh, so trace. Like so. I'll go ahead and run that. And what you will see here. Bum, bum, bum. So we're running through. So you see from our code down here that we're looping through, and there's your problem. Because we've got a looped animation, we never actually finish. Now, the cool thing is, remember, we built in all those functions, like the ability to speed up, speed down, and flip. The other one we built in was the ability to stop the animation with the escape key. So I'll hit that now, and then you will see, bang, that callback is immediately called. Uh, so it's a very, very easy to use system, to be honest. That is not really that difficult to get speed with. Uh, so hopefully you did find that useful. Sprite animations are quite powerful, um, but as you see, not that hard to do. And we cover pretty much everything you need to know. Um, so the callbacks are in there. Uh, the sequencing of animations are in there. Flipping are in there. Uh, we didn't illustrate it here, but you could also flip along the Y axis if you wished. Um, but again, pretty straightforward concept. So something I didn't cover here, and you can go into the flexible examples to find an example of this.
this. You can also generate uh, compressed, more optimized versions of the sprite sheet like I have in this one. So this sprite sheet, see all this dead space? Well, you can use tools such as a Texture Packer, which turns those into something called a Sprite Art Texture Atlas, which is kind of a, an image file and then a bunch of directions on how to get at each frame of image. So what it allows you to do is jam them all into together by you know rotating and, and such all the, the space there. Whereas this one depends on your images all being the same size in the animation. So if you want to go down that route, it is possible, but the process is slightly different. It would be probably about five or six different lines of code. Plus, of course, you need a tool to um, create those texture atlases in the first place. So I'm not going to cover that today. If there is a lot of requests, do let me know in the comments, and I can cover that in the future if required. Uh, so that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please do a click like. And of course, if you're new to the channel, this is the kind of stuff we do. All kinds of game development tutorials, reviews, um, news, etc. Sounds good to you. Please do hit that subscribe button. Oh, and uh, final note, again, all the code that we've been working with here, all the assets, etc., are already on the Patreon Dropbox. So if you are a Patreon supporter, uh, once again, thank you. And secondly, this is up there for your perusal. It's under the uh, tutorials, hacks, uh, hacks and flixel section. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. See y'all later. Goodbye.